and welcome to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners of Futurum Research, and on behalf of my team at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're glad to have you. In this keynote conversation, Futurum's Daniel Newman and More Insights and Strategy's Patrick Moorhead sit down with Darius Adamczyk, Chairman and CEO of Honeywell, to discuss the incredible growth potential of quantum computing over the next few years. This is a conversation I've been looking forward to. Let's go have a listen. Darius Adamczyk, CEO at Honeywell, welcome to the 6.5 Summit. We are so pleased to have you kick off our day three of this summit. How are you doing today? Doing great. It's a pleasure to be here. So Darius, let's just jump right in here. Uh, if you've watched Daniel and I talk about Honeywell and write about Honeywell, you've seen that we've been very vocal about Honeywell becoming a tech company. And it seems the market is starting to see the shift here. But it is a journey to reinvent such a large, diverse company like Honeywell. Can you talk a little bit about the transformation, talk about how it's going, and what you see in the future of terms of what I would call a pivot? Sure. And again, thanks you for the invite. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'll kind of divide this up into two stages. Maybe the first one is kind of what I call the misperception stage of what Honeywell is or what Honeywell was, because I would argue that we've always been a technology company that's really served the industrial world and had so many inventions along the way of our very rich 100-year history. But what we've done in my tenure is I would argue we've really accelerated our journey into an advanced technologies. And whether it's the announcement we made today around quantum computing, some of our UAB, UAM technologies, some of the advanced materials that we're bringing to the market, our Forge Connected Enterprise offering, all of these actions are accelerating Honeywell's presence in the technology segment. And we're also done some portfolio transformation and really kept some of the businesses that really differentiate by technology are well aligned to the mega trends while separating, while separating the others, which frankly don't fit the Honeywell profile. So it's been, you know, we've been at it now for more than five years and uh, our customers are seeing it and, uh, and frankly, our investors are seeing it as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really big migration. And as you said, the market is starting to see it. I will say one of the challenges, though, is getting that sort of tech first, innovation first mindset where people say, you know, it's OK that a company has very successful legacy businesses and, you know, are on the front edge, cutting edge of tech. It feels like, Darius, people get it with things like automotive, right? We're watching this transformation of an old industry, combustion engines moving to EV and electrification, but in, for some reason, because you guys have this legacy, you know, medical business, you were providing masks during COVID, and we'll talk more about that later, or because, you know, you've, you've been in these industrial spaces and working in aerospace and other, that somehow that means you can't be a software company. And, you know, not to, to, to press that answer a little bit, but uh, I'm going to take advantage of the time we have together here. You know, I'm, I'm, how do you change the mindset? Because like you said, I think you're starting, but what's been the key to actually making that those people out there changing their mindset, starting to see this that way? Well, I think, Daniel, you're exactly right. I mean, I think that there is, let's, let's be honest about it, there is a little bit of a perception overhang, as I call it, around some of the more kind of traditional businesses that we're in. And, you know, let's be honest, that kind of pays the bills and it, it allows us to maintain deep, uh, relationships of our customers. We have vast installed bases, but it's also the thing that really positions our swell for the future of technology because we have tremendous credibility of our customer base. They trust us. They understand us. Let's be let's be clear. In the industrial customer space, you have to you have to establish credibility. You have to understand your customers in the long term. Now, as you overlay that kind of a presence, that kind of domain expertise, that kind of installed base, whether it's building technologies, whether it's aerospace, whether it's warehouse automation, uh, industrial automation, all these large installed bases, 
now we can start layering in some of our more future-oriented technologies, such as Honeywell Forge, such as the quantum announcement we made today, some of our sustainability technologies, um, renewable technologies, eco-finding, carbon cap capture. You know, I can go on and on. And you know, part of the problem, I believe, Daniel, my hypothesis is, is that Honeywell, we're not just incubating one breakthrough technology, we're incubating many. And I'm quite convinced that I'm going to be in front of the press hopefully a quarter from now, talking about the next breakthrough technology we're incubating. You know, today is kind of the day of quantum, but I'm quite convinced we have many other technologies we're going to bring to the marketplace. And maybe it's sort of this, you know, lack of concentration is why we don't get um, some, some of the credit that the automotive industry does. But frankly, we have much more optionality in many other avenues to bring the latest and greatest tech to the marketplace. Absolutely. And maybe we'll hear uh, the word SaaS and cloud and more frequently in some of your upcoming earnings calls. I listen to those, by the way, and uh, those kinds yeah, of words you. maybe start to make that yeah. connection. So I want to keep moving here because I want to talk about one of those words, 5G. Um, we hear a lot from, you know, chip and device makers about 5G, but it has a huge set of implications for manufacturing and industry 4.0. How is Honeywell seeing 5G as a, as a growth catalyst uh, in, in helping to transform your offerings? You mentioned Forge. And how you know, do you see it accelerating this transformation we just talked about and, and basically this identity shift that you're in the middle of? Yeah, and, and when we think about Forge and our connectivity software, you know, we kind of think about four primary sort of segments of technology that one needs. One called sensors. In some cases, we call those products because, you know, products is really just another name for a sensor. Two is connectivity. The third one is storage. And the fourth one being analytics. Those are the four core things that one needs to really be successful in terms of Forge. Why we're excited about 5G is that it really helps enable that connectivity piece because it gives us another effective, efficient, lower cost ability to connect our hardware to analytics to, to storage etc and that's why we're excited about it and you know for us we're starting to build that into our connectivity methodologies and and into our products and making it ubiquitous in what we do and you know we're particularly excited about this because we're never going to be purely a software company and we're never going to be purely a hardware company we're a hybrid and that's the way we're going to to, to grow. Obviously, our software piece is growing at a much faster pace, but we need that connectivity to really enable us to communicate back with those sensors or products or whatever you want to refer to them back. And 5G allows us to do that. So speaking of tech companies, um, you know, first off, I, I kind of laugh when, when people talk about Honeywell not being a tech company. When you look at space and the decades that you've been part of space, uh, and also uh, from all the research I've done is the missing link between uh, IOT in, in connecting the IT with the OT is somebody in OT who understands technology. And I feel like you've demonstrated that uh, with Forge and, and the magic is really going to start to come together inside of uh, brownfield factories to, to really unlock that value. Now, one area which is literally on the cutting edge of technology is, is quantum. And I, and I so appreciate uh, you doing a deal uh, last week uh, for us, uh, for uh, our event, pulling together, I'm joking of course, the recent announcement of Cambridge Quantum connecting with Honeywell Quantum. And so many people are excited about this and it brought a tremendous uh, amount of excitement to the table. So some might say on one hand that Honeywell should have made this move uh, early on. Uh, others say it's a, just a massive validation of the quantum business, uh, bringing it more attention. So can you talk a little bit about this move, uh, the timing, and, and maybe what you see for quantum uh, in the next few years? Well, Pat, it wasn't easy to bring it all together today. So that, you know, we, we we try to pull that off, but it wasn't that easy. But but it is 
it is really a transformative day, both for Honeywell and I would believe the future of the quantum industry, because we've always been very, very bullish about the capability of our hardware. Uh, you know, that's, and it, by the way, that's not my belief, but I, I literally quiz a lot of the customers we currently have who've been operating in some of the competitive systems, and they reinforce the fact that we're ahead of others in, by some cases, many, many years. But we always needed that hardware alone is insufficient. You really need to partner with somebody who, or develop your own software, your operating system, a user interface, and a developer kit that that uh, that was needed. And we could have done that ourselves. We could have invested and done that. It would have taken us a while. Uh, but frankly, we want to accelerate that journey and why we're so thrilled to partner and create this new JV with CQC is that they're also the leader in software. When I say software, not just end user applications that they're pretty far along in developing, such as pharma research, such as cryptography. So it's application specific software, but also the operating system, which is, by the way, hardware agnostic and configurable for the various quantum hardware that's out there, because as we all know, there isn't one approach to quantum side. There's the trapped ion, which we use, there are semiconductor and there are other approaches, but also they're developed something called Ticket, which is a developer oriented um, kit to really be able to program on, um, on quantum computers. So it's, it's a really breakthrough technology one that's readily available and, and just about all the users are, are using out there to develop on quantum. And by the way, we want to make sure that CQC remains agnostic and we anticipate it's going to do business with all the hardware quantum players. And we're going to kind of keep a Chinese wall between our hardware and theirs because we want them to continue to flourish with Honeywell hardware as well as other players in the industry. Yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, I, I have, you know, the expression I like is, you know, wonder twins unite uh, here. Uh, and not only am I looking forward to a very uh, tightly coupled solution that can come between that, but obviously CQC and its platform independence, uh, so we can add value to, to most of the entire quantum market uh, like it is uh, out there today. And I happen to like the timing. I think the timing is, is, is fantastic. Uh, we're very uh, rapidly moving from uh, theory to uh, reality, and uh, it'll it'll this will all start off as um, uh, out algorithmic, and then move to more and more of the compute stack, just like we saw with GPUs and the evolution of GPUs. I mean, what ten years ago, GPUs were just being used for games. And now look at what GPUs are doing. They're they're essentially driving the entire machine learning economy out here, and uh, that's the type of progression uh, that, that that I'm looking forward to uh, between uh, the two companies. And congratulations, uh, you being at the helm at, at yet another company. So looking forward to it. Well, well, thank you, and and we're just as thrilled because we know what the potential is. You know, we're. You know, the growth here is exponential. That's that's what's in our business plan is exponential growth. But but the fact is the value creation is real and it's real today because customers are very smart. They don't pay for things that that, that don't bring them any value. And both CQC today as well as Honeywell Quantum Systems are generating revenues today, literally as we speak. And we're oversubscribe we you know we because we still spend a lot of time i mean we could maximize our commercial outcomes to the positive and i would say we probably spent a third of our time around ge generating commercial outcomes because we want customers start using quantum computers start solving problems but we spent two-thirds of our time and energy in advancing both the software for in the case of cq suite cqc as well as the hardware for Honeywell, because we want to make these computers more and more powerful. And we're already very, very close to the day where the quantum computer is going to be more powerful than the best and most powerful tradition. That's you know a handful of years away. That's not a decade away. We are literally single-digit years away from that.
And, and Darius, I think that's what the market's really waiting to hear. And then, of course, Pat and I always talk about say do. Some of our customers use that a lot. But of course, we're going to be monitoring very closely what's being said. And, and for everyone out there, if you've heard us using interchangeable timelines, because Darius is saying today, Pat was saying last week, we all know events are, are sometimes pre recorded. These sessions are recorded just ahead of the actual event where we were super excited to have Darius here. But just so you know, this happened to be the day that the announcement was made. So we're so excited. We actually got to talk to him on this day. And Pat, good job trying to place us into the future so effectively. Um, I, you know, I'm thrilled to see how it, it, it really develops. You know, I'm a, I'm a guy that loves that, that, that line between uh, the investment and the industry, technology and finance. And, you know, I'm waiting to see, you know, the monetization. And, you know, I think, you know, everyone's kind of saying it's got to get to a hundred million, then to a billion, then bigger and bigger. So, Speaking of something getting bigger and bigger, ESG has become more in the, uh, you know, in the mind of society than ever. I think being at home, having a global pandemic to deal with, uh, more attention to, to equality, equity and diversity, uh, inclusion over the last year. And of course, you know, we've been following very closely things that, that your firm, that Honeywell has been doing. You made some big commitments early on uh, supplying PPE and, and, and support later on on the vaccination, uh, even building and customizing some technology to help uh, in, in your hometown, the corporate offices of Charlotte, and then offering that technology to scale into other markets where uh, where it could. Um, but, you know, that's only really one part that, I, you know, we're tracking. You guys have a lot of ambitions, uh, sustainability ambitions, uh, diversity and inclusion ambitions. You know, we'd love to hear a little bit more about where you are at with that, what's important, what are your ambitions and goals for Honeywell into the future? You know, thank you for that, Daniel. I mean, as you know, we were very active during this this crisis that the world has faced and, and is still facing in some geographies. And, you know, frankly, we shifted kind of the more remedial kinds of efforts away from the U.S., which is quickly coming out of the pandemic. But let's be honest, I mean, we have over 10,000 employees in India and, uh, you know, we're focusing our efforts there to provide relief, to provide PP&E, to really provide vaccinations for them. Actually, most of our employees are already vaccinated now in India, I'm proud to say, and their immediate families because there's some of the efforts that we've made there. So, you know, we've been very, very active. But, but the other thing that's really important, we're also innovative through this pandemic. So whether it's providing an alternative to glass vials, to alternative healthcare packaging, to sensors for ventilators, which we quickly scaled up capability and capacity, but also for the world of energy. I mean, we, we know that the world of energy is going to evolve and energy is going to have to be much more sustainable and renewable. And we think we have a great role to play in that conversion, particularly in our performance and materials technologies business, which frankly serves the energy sector, primarily the oil and gas sector, that's been the core of what we do. And we think we can be extraordinarily helpful in transitioning from a hydrocarbon intensive source of energy to a renewable source of energy. And just to give you a couple of specific examples, the kinds of technologies that we invented, you know, the whole concept of green fuel. So whether it's green diesel, green gasoline, we were actually one of the inventors of those technologies more than two decades ago. And to be blunt, we couldn't get anybody's attention to actually implement these technologies until recently. So we're thrilled to see the world going much more green. When he talks about carbon capture, you know, we, we made a recent announcement of, of a project at Wabash Valley. We're going to go on the biggest North American carbon capture projects where we've been a thrill to be selected as the technology partners. Whether it's plastics recycling, we have a number of technologies in that space that we're going to be bringing to the world that aren't, you know, necessarily in the development stage. They're already bringing them to the market today. So, a lot of technologies to help the world be much more sustainable. And what, and in terms of inclusion, diversity, respect integrity and ethics, those are our core fundamentals. Those are our key principles as to who we are as Honeywell. And, and, you know, and frankly, you know, we have these two kinds of elements, behaviors, which we sort of give, we hope people exhibit, 
and principles which we live and breathe every day. And frankly, you can't work in Honeywell if you don't subscribe to these principles of diversity, inclusion, respect, integrity, and ethics. Those are our core principles and the ones we live in. And whether we look at the makeup of our, of our board, the look at makeup of our manage, my management team, we, uh, we're striving to be highly diverse and inclusive in our culture. Yeah, Darius, uh, in regards to the E of, of ESG, um, I've seen so many people relying on improved sensors and improved systems to get a better idea of what's going on, let's say, with their building or with their factory. And, and I believe that uh, technologies uh, and platforms like Forge uh, will take us above and beyond uh, where we are today because it's one thing to have a sensor. It's another thing to put the intelligence behind it and correlate that data across multiple data planes to actually see what's truly going on and only use the amount of energy you really need or identify assets that are, are working inefficiently that might be better off being replaced uh, than burning 10 years of energy. So it's an area that I think we're just scratching uh, the surface on here. And I think Forge plays a huge role uh, in that. Well, I think, Pat, you're exactly right. And, and you know, maybe one other thing that, to add to that is that, you know, as essentially as a controls company, because that's really the heart of where we are. That's probably the one commonality in technology across all the segments we participate, whether it's building control, warehouse controls, industrial controls, aviation controls. When you control something, you're a controls company, you obviously have to be connected to just about everything in that system, in that ecosphere. So we have a unique advantage that we understand these domains and we're already connected to them, which kind of gives us that leg up of already having that kind of data processing collection expertise. And now we're going to be using that data differently to provide incremental value to customers. So whether it's energy savings, efficiency, proficiency, industrial worker safety, those are all these kinds of value stories and personas that we're going to bring to our customers in our current domains. Absolutely. And we're kind of coming to the end here of our time, Darius. Uh, you know, I want to say thank you. Those examples are, are tremendous. And by the way, Pat, you mentioned the whole really understanding OT. Well, just recent partnership announcements with SAP for that building management technology. Last year, big announcements in partnership with Microsoft, by the way, all here at the 6.5 Summit. Um, you know, Pat, I guess we just got to say, anyone that says Honeywell is not a tech company probably needs to check what Honeywell is doing. And it was so great to have you here on this day, on the day of your big uh, Honeywell Quantum and CQC announcement of the new joint venture. We're thrilled and excited that you are able to get that done and excited to see what it, what what comes of it. So with that, Darius Adamczyk, thank you so much for being part of the 2021 6.5 Summit. We hope to have you back next year. I look forward to it. Thank you, Daniel Pat, and I uh, hope to be back next year. Thank you. So for everyone out there, that concludes the keynote session for our day one. What a way to start the day. We've got a whole bunch more for you today. Remember, all of our sessions are available on demand. They're available this week. They'll be available into the future. We appreciate you tuning in to our event. We'll see you very soon. Bye now.